I'm Johnny Robot here at E3, and I'm hanging out with Simon from the Creative Assembly, and we're looking at Total War Warhammer. Almighty Sigma, savior of the Empire, give me strength. For though I dedicated my life to eradicating it, it feeds, it grows, devouring all. This is something crazy different for you guys. Yeah, this is a kind of whole new kind of world for us, really. I mean, it's literally a whole new world, but, you know, we are very traditionally a historical studio, and, you know, we always loved our history side and things like that, but, like, now we've got Warhammer as a franchise, and it's something that I think us as a studio, I'm sure a lot of people have really wanted us to do for a long, long time, to bring the Warhammer world to life in a Total War engine. Having this like fantasy feeling now, what does that actually allow you to do that you couldn't do before? It allows us to do so much. I mean, like the Warhammer lore is so exhaustive and there's so many mechanics. I mean, they make games, right? You know, they make the tabletop war games. So they've really gone for variety and kind of scope and breadth. And we're able to take that and bring that into kind of the Total War franchise. So you're going to see things like flying units, giants. You're going to see kind of vampires. You're going to see dwarves, like all sorts of crazy stuff coming out in these battles as well as magic, which I'm sure you'll agree was quite uh, visually opulent. <laughs> Let's talk about those new mechanics. You've got magic, you've got flying units. That's going to change the battlefield. It's totally going to change the battlefield, but at the same time, we're still making a Turtle War game, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be balanced. It's going to feel like a kind of part of the gameplay. So as you saw, like the magic, for example, it's a really kind of big thing for us and in the Warhammer tabletop game as well, right? You've got your spell casters who are able to kind of move around the battlefield casting spells from their laws. But then you've got the idea of the winds of magic, which are kind of moving across the battlefield and kind of can either limit or kind of help the spells that you're wishing to cast at the time. So even though they're really powerful and can wipe out quite a lot of men in a single fire, right? But actually at the same time, it's got to be strategically used in order to kind of be useful, right? Otherwise you're using all your magic on a single spell, which you could have used maybe some more buff or debuff spells, right? So that's really interesting. But then as you say, you've got flying units as well, right? And this is new. This is like one of my favorite bits. It's like we've added almost like a second layer to the battlefield, right? No longer are you kind of bound to the ground, as it were. You have these units which are actually able to kind of fly up high on the battlefield and kind of strike at kind of pinpoint targets, right? So say there's like a squishy wizard at the back of your kind of lines, right? He's kind of vulnerable. He's open. That's the time when you just fly your wyvern in there. So that wyvern is going to be dealing a lot of damage to those weaker units. But as soon as they start getting caught by the melee units, your strong front line, like once they're on the ground, they're vulnerable and can get taken out quite easily. So once again, it's all about the kind of strengths and weaknesses of like the various units that you're fighting against. That spider tank unit was insane. <laughs> so that's the Arachnarok, right? This is one of those units that we've really been able to, like all our units, like lift from the tabletop game. It's fantastic. I mean, I don't know if you saw, but actually there are goblins. Like there's like eight goblin archers on top of it on this little platform and they're firing, right? This is another thing that we've never done before. We have kind of these war machine style units. So you saw the steam tank as well, for example, with its rotating turret. Like, you've got lots of these units which are now kind of bigger and better and cooler than anything that we've ever done in previous Total War games. And like you said, it's still very much a Total War game. The expanse is just insanely epic. Yeah, I mean, like, that's, it's kind of the fantasy, isn't it, really? Like, through a fantasy genre, we can bring in so much more kind of visual cues and visual diversity to what we're doing, and as well as just kind of purely the art side of it. And our artists have had a great time, right? Like, they're getting to do giants and things like that. But now, our animators and the animations that we're using, we've really tried to bring a lot of character to each of the battlefield. So you saw, like, for example, the Arachnarok, your favorite, right? Like, you saw it was, like, spearing a guy on the ground and like eating him and then spitting out his shield at the end, right? It's like, this is really, really exciting and we really want you to feel kind of part of this epic experience and that's not just the units that you're seeing on the battlefield, it's also the environments as well, right? Like, so the battle you saw there was a quest battle called Blackfire Pass. The Blackfire Pass, we went for this idea of real verticality with it, right? You saw these huge cliff walls kind of going around either side and like rivers of lava <laughs> kind of flowing down there. Like, there was so much going on and we've really tried to kind of take you away from kind of the real world and into this really, really amazing fantasy world that we're trying to bring to life. Now, quests, you're a big guy on these things. Let's talk about those. I love the quest battles, man. They're one of my favorite new features. So basically, one of the things we're doing is I was saying we're doing the storytelling side, but it's all about character. So your faction lords, so people like Carl Franz, who you saw in the battle, like they will get quest chains that they must undertake, right? Now, you can choose not to, but it's good if you do take them on because I think they're great. But um, basically, it's our way of telling the story of these characters. So we tell Carl Franz's story through the campaign map, through missions that you're completing. Now, each one of these quest chains ends in a major quest battle, which is the Blackfire Pass here. 
and when you complete that quest battle, you will unlock a magic item. This one, for example, is for Galmaraz, the Warhammer. Like, you know, the whole game is named after this Warhammer, so we really wanted to do this as our kind of first showing of what it is, but it's a really good way for us to kind of tell the story and just bring a kind of slightly new feature to the battles because you're finding a preset army, right? The orcs are kind of, they will be the same army when you're fighting them, but you bring your army from the campaign map, right? So similar to like the historical battles, but you choose what you're bringing into that battle, right? Rather than having to have a preset force. So that's going to be a really interesting thing for players to experiment with. Like, you know, when I'm faced with an army that has a certain unit type or certain unit types in heavy numbers, like maybe it's an army full of flying units or something like that. How do I deal with that? As a player, what units would I need to bring to kind of defeat that army? We think it brings a kind of really interesting kind of, you've got to prepare for it and get ready to fight it, and then you can deal with it at your own discretion. And when can we expect this to hit our rigs? So basically, it's going to be coming out on PC, Mac, and Linux sometime in 2016. Fantastic. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.